Azak Ahriman, chief librarian of a thousand suns legion. But it's hard to understand why he has become this twisted and evil sorcerer. So today I want to look into some highlights and certain events that really show you how and why he is the way he is now and some of the unfortunately tragic events that he had to go through. Hope you enjoy. Azrek Ahriman was born on terror, amongst wealth and nobility. He belonged to the tribes of the Achaemenid Empire, who were located in what would be Southeast Asia. Seeing the wisdom of a united humanity, they chose to ally with the Emperor during the early days of the Unification Wars. Because of this alliance, Ahriman's tribes were spared from the worst of the Unification period and the vicious infighting. This would have allowed the Achaemenid Empire to flourish for over a century under the peace of the Imperium. Following the Emperor's victory and Terra's alliance with Mars, plans were laid out under the Imperial Palace to create the 15th Legiones Astartes. Parallel to this time period, Ahriman and his twin brother Osmond were young boys growing up amongst their tribe. Ahriman most likely would have had a very comfortable early life and would have had access to an impressive education compared to the previous warring states. The twin boys were schooled in a culture of truth and discourse. As a result of the peaceful nature of the region and the protection enjoyed by the early adoption of imperial allegiance, the Achaemenians sported few of the genetic defects or abnormalities seen amongst humans during this time and were therefore selected as an ideal recruiting source. Proving themselves to be competent and genetically stable, Ahriman and his twin brother Osmond were selected to be inducted into the ranks of the Legiones Astartes. However, during their gene seed implementation, brief resurgences of the warp storms within the boundaries of the solar system flared up. This brief warp storm was said to have generated psychic flashpoints all across Terra's globe, resulting in the outbreaks of madness, deaths and displays of cruelty. Rumours circled that the storms affected the 15th Legion's gene seed implementation, however this was yet to be seen. Surviving the implementation, the Ahriman brothers travelled to the stars alongside the Emperor and his legions as part of the Great Crusade to unite humanity. At this time, the legion had only seen small skirmish action with some rebel elements on Terra, but now would be set loose upon the stars. But, only five years into the expedition, the Thousand Suns Legion 
began manifesting psychic abilities. And with these manifestations began the flesh change. Despite a high level of compatibility with the gene seed, large numbers of the legion began to slowly devolve. A marine would be solid in stature one day, and then the next collapsing into a ball of mutated flesh. Ariman and his brothers must have felt completely powerless, despite the manifestation of their new abilities. One of those who perished was Osmond Ariman. Having to put down his own brother instilled overwhelming grief in Azek. They had been chosen together, they trained together, and survived the genetic implantation together. Ariman had lost his closest friend and his brother and shared the sentiment with his fellow Astartes of complete desperation. The problem became so severe that many voices throughout the Imperium began suggesting that the Thousand Sons be disbanded. On the verge of falling, the Legion was saved by the rediscovery of the Thousand Sons Primarch, Magnus the Red. The Primarch had brought them salvation and presented the miraculous cure to the 15th Legion for the affliction. Although only a fraction of the Marines survived the mysterious disease. Ariman and the surviving marines would have been truly grateful and would have thought highly of the genius of their new leader. In remembrance of his brother, Ariman had Osman's pendant worked into the shoulder guard of his armour, a reminder of his home and the journey he had endured thus far. The Thousand Suns were rebuilt from the Aspirants on Prospero, the planet of Magnus the Red's discovery. With the Legion at full strength and stable, they set out to rejoin the Great Crusade. Over the countless battlefields, Ironman and his fellow Astartes learned to fully utilize their psychic abilities to new and untold heights. The earliest surviving mention of an Azek Ariman is in the Anguru campaign in the final years of the Great Crusade's second century. A standard action of the time in which was a pre-industrial human world and was to be brought into imperial compliance. Ariman leads a search team in pursuit of the Primarch after Magnus had made himself absent from his legion. Despite Magnus's insistence that he was not to be disturbed under any circumstances, this incident represented the first time that Ariman mistrusted the judgment of his Primarch, and then acted against his orders. It's clear that the two centuries of trust that Magnus had earned with Ariman was waning. 
Being the chief librarian to the Legion, Armin had begun to notice increasingly suspicious behaviour from his Primarch. This must have not sat well with him, as over time he'd become a true advocate for open use of psychic powers in the Imperium. He confided in his fellow Astartes companions, such as Amon, one of the first non-Terran inducted into the Thousand Suns Legion. The previous tutor of Magnus and fellow pro Psyker, Armon was a master of deception and subterfuge, having served as master of the Hidden Ones on Prospero. It was said that amongst the members of the Thousand Sons, even the most powerful psychic might of the Chief Librarian. Isaac Ahriman, he was useless in detecting Armand's presence, a man he truly respected. Ahriman also found fellowship with the fellow space wolf rune priest Othir Wordmake, during which he happily shared information on the Thousand Suns psychic disciplines, in which he thought was a sharing between Brother Astartes. It was also at this time that Ariman was charged by his Primarch with inducting the Remembrancer Lumenil Gorman into the ways of the Thousand Suns. This was intended to develop Gorman's own psychic abilities, and thus, through him, spread Magnus's pro-psycho beliefs throughout the Imperium. Ariman took Gorman under his wing, and spent a significant amount of time training the Remembrancer, and teaching him the sorcerous knowledge unique to the Thousand Suns. But, Ariman's dreams of a pro psycho imperium would have doubt cast upon it. On the world of Heliosa, Ariman was present for the sudden re-emergence of the flesh change within the Legion. The rampant mutation to the Thousand Suns returned. After Magnus had previously promised that he had cured it, Ariman must have been inconsolable. His own twin brother had suffered this miserable fate. How could he ever trust the words of his Primarch again? Things would only go from bad to worse. The Council of Nikea was called, and the Emperor outlawed the use of psychic abilities within the Space Marine Legions and sorcery across the Imperium. To Ariman, the Council of Nikea felt like a trial of the Thousand Suns. He felt betrayed by the Emperor's decision. Far worse, was the fact that the first person to step forth and accuse the Thousand Sons was his old friend, the Rune Priest, Othair Wordmake. Revealing Magnus has used sorcery of the warp to cure his legion. Betrayals struck Ariman from every side, as it was also at this time that he first learned that Magnus had not only been aware of the Dark Power's existence within the Immaterium, but likely he had struck some form of Dark Bargain, which had resulted in only stemming the rampant mutation. Ariman found his trust in his Primarch further shaken, 
as he discovered Magnus ultimately used his own potent psychic abilities to remove the details of the deal he had struck with the dark entities straight from his chief librarian's mind before Ariman could understand or denounce it. Any hope of a pro psycho imperium had been set back, all because of Magnus. Join Ariman and the Legion before the start of the Horus Heresy, where Magnus next attempted to warn the Emperor of the impending betrayal of his son Horus. However, in his arrogance, Magnus shattered the psychic defences of the Imperial Palace on Terra destroying the psychic wards that the Emperor himself had placed. This action had dire consequences, especially for the Emperor's plan for the salvation of humanity through the use of the Webway Project. Refusing to believe that Horus, his most beloved and trusted son, would actually betray him. The Emperor instead mistakenly perceived the traitor to the Imperium to be Magnus and his thousand sons. The Emperor ordered Primarch Lehman Russ, Magnus's greatest rival, to mobilize his Space Wolves Legion and the Sisters of Silence to take Magnus into custody. He was to be returned to Terra to stand trial for violating the Council of Nicaea. While en route to the Thousand Suns Legion's homeworld of Prospero, Horus convinced Russ, who had always been repulsed by Magnus's reliance on psychic powers to level Prospero. Magnus even murdered his own captain, as he knew too much, in an effort to sacrifice his legion to spare some of the impending loyalist forces. Magnus intended to accept his fate and though history might judge the Thousand Sons as traitors, at least Magnus and his sons would know the truth. They would know that they were loyal unto the end because they accepted their fate. After the Space Wolves Legion fleet entered the system, they proceeded to destroy Prospero's orbital defences. They then commenced a tremendous orbital bombardment that reduced Prospero and its people to cinders, except its capital, Tisca, the fortress of Magnus and the 15th Legion that at all times was protected by a powerful psychic kind shield. The shield was maintained by one of the Thousand Sun sorcerous cults. Magnus did not disable it, knowing that such an action would alert his legion. Because of the shield, a huge force of landing vehicles and support craft descended upon the city, whose defences had been left mostly unmanned. The Space Wolves began slaughtering all in sight, and burning everything to the ground. 
Ariman and the Legion must have been caught completely by surprise as they laid witness to an assault by their Imperial allies. Why were they under attack? Why did the Emperor betray them like this? Where is Magnus? Ariman and his friend, Captain Amon, rallied their brothers. They would not be sacrificed to atone for the sins of another. The 15th took up arms against their loyalist invaders and managed to hold Tiska, fighting tooth and nail for every meter. And for a period of time, actually held. Sensing Othair word makes presence in the horde of space wolves, Ariman made psychic contact with him, dragging him into the etheric plane to reason with him. The two psychers dueled for a time, until Ariman managed to link minds with Wordmake and showed him the truth. Wordmake learned it all. Horus's betrayal, the setting up of the Thousand Suns and Space Wolves, and the mistakes that had led them to this point. He returned both himself and the stunned Wordmake to their bodies, but kept their minds linked. Ariman paused to look around and witnessed Lehman Russ slay the Thousand Suns by the dozens and the Space Wolf's mindless destruction of all he held dear. In a moment of rage, Ariman spitefully cast Wordmake's soul into the warp, leaving him to a slow death. They had been friends once, and in anger he had destroyed him, and his chances of clearing his legion's name. There was no hope, and Ariman accepted the consequences of his actions, believing his death was certain. After bearing witness to the complete destruction of Prospero, even the libraries, Magnus thought that this had gone too far, and reluctantly he took to the battle against the loyalist forces of Lehman Russ and his Wolfen. At the height of the battle, Magnus and Lehman Russ took part in a devastating duel, in which Russ was ultimately victorious. Mortally wounded, with his back broken, it was seemingly the end for Magnus, for Ariman, and the Thousand Suns Legion, when suddenly, at the edge of defeat, the Legion vanished. Ariman found himself awakening upon a planet that would be dubbed the Planet of Sorcerers, where he was reunited with the survivors in his legion, and with the now transformed being of etheric energy, Magnus the Red himself. Shortly before their sudden transportation, Magnus gave Ariman a precious gift, a portion of his power and his most prized possession, the Book of Magnus. This massive tome contained the collected knowledge of Magnus, and it was said that this work was the most complete 
of all collections on psychers, witchcraft, and sorcery in the galaxy. A compilation of all the knowledge and experiments gathered by Magnus during the numerous conquests of the Thousand Suns during the Great Crusade. The power received from this tome had allowed the now revealed Chaos God Zeech to tear the Legion from Prospero to his domain in the Warp. Following their exile into the Eye of Terror, Ariman's love and admiration for his gene sire had turned to hatred and contempt. When the flesh change once again ran rampant among the survivors of the Thousand Sons, and Magnus seemed to accept it. Ariman set out to find a cure for the flesh change himself, as he no longer trusted the Primarch's word. In his own hatred and arrogance, he thought to use the very energy of change to stop change. Using the sorcerous knowledge held in the Book of Magnus, Ariman designed the plans for a mighty arcane spell that would ultimately undo all the suffering that his brothers were enduring, and thus protect them from the flesh change for all eternity. Preliminary testing of the spell he called the rubric showed promise, but he soon found that he lacked the raw power to complete the spell. He then set to work, gathering those amongst the remaining veterans of the Thousand Sons who shared his feelings of disgust and betrayal from their Primarch. Gathering in a fell circle around Ariman, this cabal of sorcerers lent their power to him and started this ritual of salvation. Armon was amongst those who had joined Ariman's breakaway cabal, those who had always been the most headstrong and those with the most psychic power in the 15th Legion. The spell was cast, and the flesh change seemed to stop, but the true results were not what was intended. The spell preserved less than a hundred of the Legion's sorcerers, and condemned the rest. The majority of the Battle Brothers of the Legion who lacked the potent psychic gifts, could not deal with the cataclysmic amounts of sorcerous energy that flowed through them. Their flesh burned on the spot, their bodies reduced to ash inside their armour. And yet, the energies released sealed all the joints of their power armour as it burned their bodies. When their souls attempted to depart these ruined husks, they found themselves prisoners inside their own armour, dead, yet still alive, hollow and without a body forever. Ariman himself, along with most of the gathered cabal, were distraught with the results. Despite their good intentions to save the Legion from the flesh change, it was hubris for Ariman to believe he could cure the change with change. He arguably had done more damage to the Legion than anyone. Magnus was furious 
and would punish this traitorous cabal for what they had done to his legion. Not willing to fight their Primarch, the Chaos Sorcerers immediately knelt and quaked before Magnus's fury. Ariman would not kneel. He saw no help from his Primarch in curing the flesh change and would not feel sorry for trying to save them. Before the demon Primarch could strike down his former chief librarian, the architect of fate, Zinch himself, intervened, staying Magnus's hand. The Lord of Change having need for the sorcerer in his plans. Instead, Ariman and the rest of his cabal were banished. As Ariman was exiled, he had plenty of time to reflect on the life-changing events that he had experienced in succession. Ariman had served the Emperor and the Imperium for over two centuries with complete loyalty. He and his brother Astartes had fought on countless battlefields against the worst of what the galaxy had to offer. After awakening his psychic abilities, he truly saw it as an invaluable tool for humanity, as instead of wasting scores of human life, campaigns could be concluded with the abilities of a select few. With the results of the Council of Nicaea and the condemning of the Thousand Sons, Ariman must have felt frustrated with the state of the Imperium. But he never could have imagined that the Imperium would betray them and attempt to destroy the entire Legion. He threw away any loyalty he had to the Imperium as now he realised they did not align with his beliefs on humanity and psychic powers being intertwined. With the failure of the rubric ritual, Ironman carries this immense guilt for cursing his brothers and is despised by a number of his fellow sorcerers. He would spend many years in exile hiding from those who wished him dead, and would use this time to increase his Warpcraft knowledge to better understand the rubriquet. We rejoin Ariman, who has been hiding amongst a renegade warband dedicated to corn, Known as the Harrowing, masquerading as a lowly sorcerer initiate named Horkos. He was looked upon with contempt by his fellow renegades and viewed as the lowest of the low and an oath breaker. Amongst those dedicated to corn, it is the last place you would expect to find a powerful sorcerer due to their anti-magic zeal that Korn is known for, as well as the dampening aura those chosen of Korn would have on Psychers. As Ariman leads this double life, the members of the previous Cabal reform under his previous friend Armon. The Brotherhood of Dust was created and determined to find all the secrets of the rubric and perhaps restore their brothers back to life. 
over the next 1,000 standard years, Amon amassed more and more power, gathering void ships, other Chaos Space Marines, hundreds of rubrique and a number of apprentices, who themselves became formidable Chaos Sorcerers in their own right. Yet, despite all his grand schemes and designs, he still needed the wayward Ahriman, for he possessed the greatest knowledge on the rubric. After a grueling and long search, the Brotherhood of Dust found the exile. Seeing that the jig was up, Ariman unleashed his suppressed sorcerer abilities against both his previous cornate allies and the encroaching Thousand Sun sorcerers. After slaughtering a majority of the Harrowing's leadership, he needed answers. How and why was he found now? After vicious duels between Ariman and the Brotherhood, he was eventually wounded, and Armon used powerful wards of binding and hexes and brought him aboard his flagship. Luckily, Ariman's allies came to rescue him, and they managed to aid in his escape. But the former librarian was soon confronted by an enraged Amon, who unleashed a powerful psychic attack. During the ensuing duel, Ariman revealed the secrets of the rubric. It was part of all the Thousand Suns, bound into their very souls. It was power in Ariman's hands. Seeing that there was nothing left between them, the Chaos Sorcerer caused Armon to spontaneously combust from the powerful psychic energy. Armon's armor came apart, each component pulling away from the other, spilling grey dust and turning into the wind. Ariman lifted into the air, the separate pieces of Armon's armor overlaying his body. Armon's horned helm slipped over Ariman's skull. The Brotherhood of Dust just stood, witnessing this horrifying rebirth as the dead Rubrique simply waited. Raising his hands, Ariman summoned magical flames from the floor, which seared the red from the armor of every Rubrique and sorcerer. Then the flames flickered blue, and the silver armor became polished sapphire. Ariman looked across the sea of blue. Slowly he knelt and bowed his head. The transformed and empowered sorcerer assumed control of the Brotherhood of Dust, including his massive fleet and the army of followers. Ten thousand years passes in real space, more or less for Ariman. It's impossible to tell how the warp time has affected this sorcerer. His name is a curse in the mouths of all sentient beings. To the Eldar, he is a scourge who tries to devour the souls of this dying race. A master of 
subtle manipulations. Ahriman has seeded cults on hundreds of worlds, using them to his own ends. A true puppet master who pulls invisible strings or sets loose his reforged warband, the Prodigal Sons. He has spent countless years exploring the mysteries of the universe, using the powers of the warp as his tool. He roams the galaxy in search of artifacts and knowledge, leaving ruin in his wake. He has long abandoned the ideals he held during the Great Crusade era and solely works for the betterment of himself and his legion. Ariman even leads his warband on numerous assaults on the infamous secret Eldar craft world, the Black Library. He cleverly projected himself inside the Black Library's halls, allowing his physical body to transcribe the map to the hidden passages of the webway, adding more and more knowledge to his armory. His power begins to rival even demons of the warp. Sometime before the start of the 13th Black Crusade, in 999M41, Ariman was summoned back to the planet of the sorcerers by Magnus the Red himself for the first time since casting of the Rubrique. Though definitely not pleased to see each other, Magnus agreed to once again work with Ariman towards a common goal. Revenge on the Space Wolves during the subsequent siege of the Fenris system, the two fought together in mutual vengeance against the Space Wolves, leaving the Fenris almost decimated and left with scars of a near fully reunited Thousand Sun Legion. With revenge taken for the burning of Prospero 10,000 years prior, events after the 13th Black Crusade would change the priorities for Ahriman. His eyes were drawn to the rebirth of the Yanari, for in their resurrective powers he sees hope for his own brother Rupakei Astartes. He watches the events of the 13th Black Crusade, waiting for the right chance to strike. Sensing an opportunity, he leads a contingent of Thousand Sons into the webway, in an effort to ambush the Eldari forces that are seeking to form an alliance with the Imperial survivors of Cadia. Ariman callously sacrifices 999 captives to Zeech to shift him and his warriors with demon thralls to the Anari's location. Warpfire and mystic bolts fill the enclosed tunnels of the webway as the armies clash. Demonstrating his immense psychic power, Ariman creates a void-like pocket reality outside the walls of the webway and drags the leadership of the Eldari forces. As Ariman prepares to take the knowledge he needs, Yvrain pushes back by demonstrating to the ancient sorcerer the power she can wield by restoring to life a dozen rubric marines. The restored thousand sons are reawakened, not knowing where they were, who they were fighting, 
let alone what armor they were wearing. They only recognized their battle brother, Azek Ahriman. Over 10,000 years at least as a mindless automaton, but blood once again flowed within them, and they were alive. Who knows how long Ahriman had been searching for this knowledge, how many dark deeds he had done just to find a way to save his brothers. But before he could truly take in the moment, the Yanari threw the reanimated Thousand Sons into the void. Ariman screamed in horror as these flesh and blood warriors were lost to him once more. Early in his life, his twin brother had died because he did not have the power to save them. And again, he lacked the power to save his legion from his rubricate mistake. But now, his path is clear. He had witnessed the power of resurrection, and he knew who had the power to do it. Having witnessed the ability of Yvrain to restore the Thousand Sons afflicted by the rubric, Ariman began gathering his forces after the formation of the Great Rift. He needed to explore and understand this new sect of the Eldar, and where better than the epicenter of its beginning. This journey will take him to the site of the birth of the Inari, the cursed Drukari city of Komara. Thank you so much for watching. Ariman is quite an interesting character because he's quite different in his reasonings for doing a lot of the, you could say, evil that he commits in the galaxy because it's not evil for the sake of evil, it's evil because he's trying to save his friends and his brothers and obviously trying to correct the mistakes and the guilt that he feels. Ironman's obviously got a lot more to him and a lot more to explore about him, particularly in the Siege of Terror in what's happening now in Warhammer lore. But again, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more, just let me know. Thank you.